Why does a negative number multiplied by a negative number result in a positive number? The quick answer is that it has to be that way in order to make mathematical sense. To see why, let's begin by taking a look at some other multiplications that are far less troublesome. There's no mystery involved when multiplying two positive numbers. For example, 3 times 4 is simply 3 groups of 4, which is 12. Since multiplication is commutative, changing the order of the numbers we're multiplying has no effect on the result. That is, we can write 3 times 4 as 4 times 3 and think of it as 4 groups of 3. Multiplying a positive by a negative isn't really a problem either. For example, 3 times negative 4 is just 3 groups of negative 4, which is negative 12. Thinking of this multiplication the other way around, that is, as negative 4 groups of 3, is a bit weird and, frankly, not very helpful. So let's just stick with the first interpretation. What about a negative multiplied by a positive, such as negative 3 times positive 4? Thankfully, we don't need to think of this example as negative 3 groups of 4. As we've seen, we can just use the more easily interpreted 4 times negative 3 version, which corresponds to 4 groups of negative 3, resulting in negative 12. If we try taking this approach with two negatives, we quickly get stuck. For example, thinking of negative 3 times negative 4 as negative 3 groups of negative 4 is equally as confusing as negative 4 groups of negative 3. Sometimes, negative 3 times negative 4 is viewed as the opposite of 3 groups of negative 4, or as removing 3 groups of negative 4. Although these interpretations might serve as ways to remember that two negatives multiply to a positive, they don't really get to the heart of why that is the case. We need another way to convince ourselves that multiplying two negatives must result in a positive. The key is to use the distributive property of multiplication over addition. A quick reminder of what this distributive property is all about. Consider 3 times the sum of 4 and 5. To evaluate this expression, we could simply add 4 and 5 to get 9, and then multiply the result by 3. That is, we really just have 3 groups of 9 here, which is 27. We can arrive at this conclusion another way though. Specifically, we can multiply 3 by each term of the sum separately, and then add the results. In other words, the 3 groups of 9 that we saw earlier is the same as 3 groups of 4 plus 3 groups of 5. Due to this property, we say that multiplication is distributive over addition. Finally, to see why a negative times a negative gives a positive, consider this expression, in which we have negative 3 times the sum of 4 and negative 4. One way to evaluate this expression is to first add 4 and negative 4, which gives 0. From there, negative 3 times 0 gives a final result of 0. After all, it's just 0 groups of negative 3, and 0 groups of anything is, well, nothing. Now let's use the distributive property to evaluate the same expression in a different way. To do so, we multiply negative 3 by each term in the brackets and add the results. So, negative 3 times 4 plus negative 4 is the same as negative 3 times 4 plus negative 3 times negative 4. We know that negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, since it's just 4 groups of negative 3. But suppose we had no idea what negative 3 times negative 4 is. Remember from our earlier calculation that we should be getting a final result of 0 here. That is, negative 12 plus something is supposed to work out to 0. Well, the only number we can add to negative 12 to get 0 is 12. More specifically, positive 12. So, our negative 3 times negative 4 can only be positive 12. Notice we've just shown that a negative times a negative has to be a positive. And that's it! Through this example alone, we can see why the result of multiplying two negatives must be a positive.